Hi guys and welcome to Car Focus. Now, as you can see with us today, we've got the all new Volkswagen Golf, the Mark 8 version uh, GTI. Now, this car has been causing a bit of uh, controversy online, so to speak. Now, just to kind of explain that, I put a picture of this car on my social media last week, just to kind of get a vibe as to what people are thinking about it. I've got a couple of comments here and I'll just read them out to you before we look around the car. So we've got, someone forgot to finish designing it. Uh, now that isn't a nice looking car, very nice comment there. Oh dear, not attractive to look at for sure. And these comments, they just kind of continue on and on. Um, so it does seem like this car is a bit of a, my, is, is a, bit of a Marmite um, looking car. Um, now I actually had a, a Mark 7 Golf GTI for two years, did many, many miles and it, absolutely loved it. I just thought it was an all well-rounded polished car. It looked fantastic. So this car does have big shoes to fill. And looking at it from the outside, now what I will say is, it does look better in person. You see this car in photographs and it kind of, it looks like somebody's got a Mark 7.5 in plasticine, has kind of gone along and sort of smoothed off various corners and just made it a bit uglier. Um, but in person, it does actually look quite a bit better and it has to be seen to be appreciated. So in terms of the styling of this car, which we've just touched upon, it's been the main sort of talking point of it. Essentially the shape remains the same. Now this car is only available in a five door, which might put some people off, but it kind of just adds to the practicality of the car. And it does obviously have touches that separates this GTI from your run of the mill Golf. Now, if we start from the front, it's got the signature GTI red strips. Now most Golf GTIs, well all Golf GTIs do have red strips on the car. These come standard, we've got matrix LED headlamps, they're quite clever, so if you're cornering, they adapt the sort of brightness of the beam so it doesn't dazzle cars coming the other way. We've got this sort of black accent round here and this honeycomb grill, quite a big honeycomb grill. We've got these LED fog lights here. They remind me a bit of the Renault Megane, Megane RS. Um, I'm sure they're not copied, but they are similar. Front splitter, just like the old version, runs along the bottom, obviously GTI badging. And then if you move around to the side of the car, like I say, the side profile is very, very similar. I think it's based on the same chassis as the, the previous 7.5. Um, these do come with 18 inch wheels as standard, but this one has been upgraded. We've got the 19 inch wheels here, diamond cut face, Bridgestone Potenza tires. Now I don't know why Volkswagen don't put Michelins on. I always find the Michelin, uh, the Pilot Sport 4s, 4Ss, just to be a better tire, especially when you've got this much power going through the front. It's got the Bridgestones on anyway, they're not too bad. This here, I'm not really kind of, it's some kind of splash guard, maybe a bracket to keep the bumper on the front wing. It just looks a bit out of place, nothing major, but hey ho. GTI emblem here on the front wing, um, LED side repeaters, and we've got the, the side skirts along here, just much like the old version. Um, this car also, it comes with the the bigger brakes are standard. So the previous gen, you had to have the performance to have the bigger brakes. This comes standard on this car. And yeah, you've got the five door side profile. So we'll move around to the back and then um, we'll have a look in the car. This has changed quite a bit in a way from the Mark 7.5. It does look quite like a TIG one, the new TIG one. Um, but I guess that's just the, the modern VW family. Um, we still retain the two exhaust pipes either side and they're, they're genuine exhaust pipes as well. They're not fake. It's quite a nice touch, it kind of gives it that sporty look. Um, we've got a bit of a kind of diffuser here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any aero underneath, it's just a, a kind of facade there. And then on the tailgate, we've got this big GTI badge and the Volkswagen emblem here. I didn't know if you know this, but if you're wondering where the reverse camera is, when you pop it into reverse and you've got the, the screen come up, it's actually located inside here. So if it ever gets dirty, stick it in reverse, run around the back and give it a wipe. <laughs> anyway. Boot size, yeah, it's a fair size for this kind of uh, hatchback. I think it's about 380 litres, don't quote me on that. But with the seats down, you'll get a couple of suitcases in there, no problem at all. It's not the biggest boot I've ever seen, but it should do the job for your daily needs. One last thing, guys, before we look in the inside of the car, I just want to mention, obviously, the, the heart of the beast, so to speak, the engine. So we'll quickly uh, pop the bonnet. Now this is already something that's weird because the previous GTI, the 7.5, we had some nice gas struts. Whereas for some reason, Volkswagen have ditched that in favor of this flimsy bonnet pole holder. Um, just a minor thing, but 
I think it's missing a bit of quality from the previous car. The engine cover as well, it's this weird rubbery sort of cheap looking cover. It no longer has the GTI badge on it, but that's just me being quite picky to be honest guys. But anyway, the engine, it's the EA888 two litre turbo that we've seen in the previous generations. It's, it's in the Golf R as well, but obviously in a higher state of tune. Um, this one is now producing 242 horsepower there or thereabouts, so 245 PS, a nice chunk of torque as well. Um, and it's, it's fully full, a full combustion engine. There's no hybridness here. Um, so it's a bit old school in essence in this day and age. Possibly gonna be the last of its kind in the GTI range. May go to hybrid electric in the future. Who knows? But it's a good engine, nice and solid, um, nice and powerful, nice low down torque. And that's pretty much it guys um, from under the bonnet. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look inside the car and I will show you the interior. So the inside of the car. Quite a nice place to be. It has a similar feeling to the old car, but it's obviously a lot more futuristic now. These buttons here on the steering wheel, they're just a bit busy um, and there's a bit of a delay as well. So when you press these touch pads, there's a bit of a delay when it actually clicks and you get the command you want. And you have to kind of double check you've pressed the right button. It's not a button though, is it? You've pressed the right pad as well. And also you've got this kind of, a lot of this piano black kind of finish and it kind of just, seems a little bit cheaper but i guess they're trying to go for that more futuristic feel but i don't know it doesn't really work for me the, the previous car was nice and simple nice and clean just an easy interior to get along with and you've got all these fingerprints as well all over this kind of gloss black finish which also does look quite messy anyway enough about that we've got these nice seats though they're retaining the original tartan sort of heritage gti pattern these are a fully sculpted seat now very comfy um, there is a leather heated option, but yeah, these really do hold you in quite nicely. Not too hard as well on the backside. It's a nice place to sit. It's a good driving position as well. These come with the virtual cockpit as standard. Some quite nice features on this cockpit. You can adjust the colors, you know, personalize various features. It's got Harman Kardon um, sound system as well, which sounds really good. And yeah, it's a nice place to be. Hasn't blown me away, but um, We'll have to see how the car actually drives. That's the main thing, isn't it? Right guys, so here we are inside the Mark 8 Golf GTI behind the wheel. Now, I just want to mention a couple of things that we didn't talk about when we looked at the outside of the car and we looked at the interior. I want to quickly touch upon pricing. You can get this in manual. Um, and when it, in the manual form, it's about £33,000 there or thereabouts. To upgrade to the seven speed DSG, you're looking at 35 grand in that sort of ballpark for a base spec car. But these cars do come equipped with some quite nice features from the factory. You get an electronic, electronic limited slip differential, which you only got on the performance before. Uh, you get the bigger uprated brakes. You get the nice digital cockpit inside here. Just little touches, the matrix LED headlamps, just you know, little things like that. So if you don't want to go crazy on the options list, you've got a couple of things that will keep you occupied that come with a car as standard. Now, would I go for a manual or DSG? I do like a manual, but I think with a GTI, what you'd want from a GTI, I personally think the DSG gearbox is the one. A Golf GTI is the sort of car that you want to buy that it's just a perfectly rounded car that does everything well. It doesn't do one thing exceptionally, but it does everything well. So if you want to do the school run, go shopping. If you want to do a long journey on a motorway, a nice long road trip, hit a B road or take the car on a track, this is what the Golf GTI is about. This is where it gets its reputation because it's just known as being a perfectly well-rounded car. And the Mark 7 that I had before, I did a big Euro trip in that, over 3,000 miles in two weeks, including two laps of the Nürburgring, and I absolutely loved it. So this car has got some big shoes to fill. Now, driving the car inside, there's a couple of things I like in here. I did mention a few things I don't like, but I like the fact that down here in the center, you've got a wireless charging sort of capsule. You just slip your phone in there and it charges. It doesn't rattle around. It's not gonna fly out. It's angled downwards, so it sits nicely in there. Obviously, we've got all the mod cons, your Bluetooth, your CarPlay, your, you know, your sat-nav, everything like that, as you'd expect from a car like this. The steering wheel feels really nice. This has got the heated wheel. 
it's like zero degree, no, it's five degrees. So with a heated wheel, it's just a nice touch. We've got four different drive modes. We've got eco, comfort, sport, and individual. I'm currently in comfort. Gearbox is a bit lazy in comfort, but this car's got quite a nice chunk of torque, which kind of pulls it along effortlessly. So you don't really need to knock it down a gear in comfort. You've got enough power to sort of waft you along as and when you please. Stick it in eco, you'll, you'll be a bit more sort of coasting just to save fuel. Sport, everything ramps up, things become tighter, the, the diff kind of operates in a different way, your traction control will be reduced, your gear changes will be a bit quicker and it will rev higher. And then if you go into individual, you can then obviously customize all of those settings so that you can customize the chassis, the steering, the drive, the engine sound, the air con, um, and those kind of things. I run these in individual mode, so I have engine in sport, drive in sport, chassis in sport. I don't like the artificial weightness you get to the steering when you when you put the steering in sport. So I have that in normal mode. But I think we've established that the car's comfy. The, the car is comfy in comfort mode cruising along. Suspension is slightly stiffened um, from the last generation. Do you notice it? Yes, you do. It's not uncomfortable. It's not bone crashingly firm, but it feels just a tad bit less supple than the previous car. But that will probably come into its own when you want to push this car on some twisties. And that's where we're going to head now. We're going to head to a little twisty section of the road just to see exactly what it's like. So we've got it in its most sort of wacky setting. I've not totally disabled the traction control because it is quite damp. I've picked a very tight, bumpy road. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a little bit of stick and just see how how it flows over the bumps how it turns into corners how it feels on the braking how agile it feels and just what the steering feels like and what the auto gearbox is like without using the paddles because it's one thing having full control over the vehicle but then it's also nice to see just how sophisticated it is and if it gives you what you want when you want it so i'm just going to slow down a bit and we'll, we'll pin the throttle so we'll drop down it's going to kick down into second, I think. So we'll just do 20 miles an hour and we'll pin the throttle. And we'll kick it down. So second gear. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin, bit of torque steer. All the way up to six and a half thousand revs now we're revving. <laughs> I tell you what, it actually feels stronger than it did when I was in manual mode. I think it's because when I'm in manual mode, I'm a bit wary of letting it run all the way up to the top because it changes gear for you when you get right to the top. Whereas in auto mode, it gives you the optimum gear change, so you're getting the maximum power. So it does actually feel stronger at the top and then into the next gear change. So it's a bit greasy around here. We don't want to push it too hard. I just don't like it when you're coming into a corner and then it kicks down on the way out. It is pretty quick, guys. It's pretty quick. I'd imagine Club Sport and Golf R are going to be quite bonkers. But it's taken these bumps. What can happen in a car that's quite firmly sprung is when you're on a bumpy road like this, the bumps can kind of start to become a little bit out of control. So as the car gains momentum in suspension travel, it becomes quite crashy. But this is keeping, it's, it's staying quite, quite neutral almost. You don't feel like you're going to hop off the road. I'm going to, I'm going to use manual now because we've established that auto is pretty good. So it's a tight little section here. I'm going to go into first. Quite good under braking there. Second gear, we'll pin it out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it changed gear for me then because I was a bit too late. I think the more you gain confidence and the more you start to trust the car, the more fun it actually gets. I wouldn't say the steering is the best feeling steering that I've ever experienced, but with electric systems now, there's only so much feel you can actually get. But, yeah, the turning's quite sharp. It does feel a little bit sloppy. I don't want to say sloppy, it's, it's not, it's not the most pinpoint precision turning that I've ever felt, but it's because it's not that sort of car. It's an all-round hot hatch. 
But on a road like this, it's, it's plenty quick enough. Plenty quick enough. Right guys, that's it. My day is over with the Golf GTI. Would have been nice if I could have spent a bit more time with the car, but just from the day that I've been driving this around, it's a good car. It's not a brilliant car. It hasn't wowed me, I'm gonna be brutally honest. But I find with these GTIs, you need a bit more time with them to start to appreciate what they're all about. I think they have hit the brief. It's, it's a great car, you can hop in, you can do long journeys, do your shopping, take the kids to school, and you could probably smash out a track day and you could have some fun. But yeah, it just hasn't wowed me, but I do appreciate what it's all about. And I think maybe in a couple of years time, people will start to have gained more of an appreciation for it and what it's all about. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video guys. As always, like and subscribe, and until next time, I shall see you soon.